Okay, and we're back with wave characteristics. I know the video quality on this isn't great. I'm filming off my phone. Um, but I do, uh, you know, if it's really a problem, um, let me know. I mean, I know it's, it's going to be a little blurry. I'm trying to say everything. I'll try and write kind of big so you guys, so it's clear what I'm writing. Um, but if there's anything that you're not quite sure of, just you know, drop me an email and tell me, like, I can't see what you're saying or I don't know what, know what you're writing at uh, a certain time in the video. I'll try and fix it. Um, okay, wave characteristics. Now we're going to start focusing a little bit more on transverse waves. Uh, even if you have two transverse waves, you guys, know, you guys talked about this stuff in math class. You talked about transverse waves. You didn't call them that, but you might call this like a sine wave. Okay, more or less. Yeah, it's more or less a sine wave. Okay. Um, if we're talking about two transverse waves, even if they're both transverse, they can have very, very different characteristics. And that's what we're going to do today is we're going to be talking about their characteristics. So the first thing I want to talk about is... Um, the amplitude of a wave. Let me scroll down a little bit. Um, the amplitude, as you may have probably guessed, is going to be this arrow right here. This is the amplitude. Okay. Now, notice that the amplitude is not from the top all the way down to the bottom. It is from this kind of midpoint to one of the, to the peak, okay? You can also say that the amplitude is from here to here. It really doesn't matter, as long as you're going from the baseline up to a place where there is maximum displacement. Maximum displacement of the wave from equilibrium. Uh, informally, you can call it the height of the wave. Okay? You find it by measuring the distance from either the crest, crest is the high points of the wave, okay? This is a crest. I've used that word a couple times so far. Or the trough, the low point of the wave. This right here is a trough. Two, the middle of the wave, the equilibrium line. Okay, so this right here, we can call this the equilibrium level. Equilibrium level. Or, if you want, just call it like the middle. All right, the, the middle in terms of y axis, not in terms of the x axis. Uh, the units of the amplitude depend on what the wave represents. If it's a like an ocean water wave, you would say that the amplitude is in height. If it's a sound wave, you would say that the amplitude is in decibels for loudness. If it's a light wave, you would say that the amplitude is in uh, units of brightness. Okay, there's a bunch of different units for brightness, all of which escape me at the moment. For a longitudinal wave, it's a little bit different. Okay, we're not going to worry too much about this one. But for a longitudinal wave, amplitude is measured based on what I will call the condensations, just another word for compressions. The condensations, and here's a really fancy word, rarefactions, R-A-R-E-F-A-C-T-I-O-N-S. It means the same thing as elongations. Longitudinal wave with a larger amplitude has more dense condensations and more spread out rarefactions. So let me give you two examples. There's one example, and I'll give you another. Again, what these really are these lines that I'm showing, you can think of them as kind of like, uh, they're denoting areas of like high air pressure, low air pressure. So for one of these, the one on the right, we have higher amplitude. We would say this is a higher amplitude uh, longitudinal wave. Why? Because the condensations are much, much denser, much closer together, and the rarefactions, the elongations, the distance between uh, and the spread out parts is much, much bigger. So we say that that is a higher amplitude uh, longitudinal wave. Okay? I highly doubt you're going to have to know that for the regions, but I throw it in there just in case. Okay? Um, the amplitude of a wave, we've got to talk about what that is proportional to. All right? The amplitude of a wave, um, like I was saying, the units kind of depend on what you're measuring. And that goes along with what we're about to talk about. The amplitude of a wave is in general, 
for almost every wave, with the exception of one, is proportional to the energy transmitted by, a wave, by the wave itself. Um, a greater amplitude for a sound wave means that there is a larger volume. Uh, people who are in, so the people watching this are my, my fourth and fifth period class. Um, you guys aren't going to get the demonstration, but what I usually do is I ask, okay, well, if you put more energy into a sound wave, what happens? And I start talking quieter and quieter, and someone goes, it gets louder. And I scream at the top of my lungs, like, it gets louder! And I usually get everyone to jump. Um, you guys don't get that. I don't know, maybe I'll do it at some point. Um, tenth period saw that, so that was fun. One of my favorite things. I love screaming. Um, it does not, okay, you put more energy in, you increase the amplitude of a sound wave, it increases the volume. It does not do anything to what I guess I would call the pitch or the tone, okay, not the, the note, the, like how high it is. On the other hand, for light waves, a greater amplitude means that the light is simply brighter. Funnily enough, Brighter light is not, that's, is not more energetic light, but we need to skip uh, talking about that for right now. We'll talk about that later on. Okay? So amplitude in general, for almost every wave, except for light, is proportional to energy. Okay? For sound waves, that means higher volume. And remember, you're measuring from the mid-height of the wave up to the crest or down to the trough. Not from crest to trough. Please do not do that. Okay? That is not the amplitude. That is wrong. Uh, phase, we got to talk about wave phase. You guys probably also kind of talked about this in math. I know you talked about amplitude. Um, you probably didn't, maybe you called it phase, maybe you didn't. Two points on a wave are in phase if they meet the following two criteria. So two points are in phase if the following is true. If their displacements from equilibrium are equal, they have the same phase, if that is true, and if those two points are moving in the same direction. That's the criteria for telling if something is in phase or not. So, I'm going to leave this, well actually no, it's a video, you can just pause it if you need to get it written down. I'm going to erase this, obviously, and I'm going to go back up to that picture from the top. Okay, there's one arrow that we haven't filled in, that's fine, I'm, I'm okay with us not uh, having that filled in yet. Um, there's one arrow that we haven't filled in, that's fine, um, this one right here. But I'm going to put some shapes around certain points on here. So circle, circle, square, square, and triangle, triangle. Um, if you read down there, it says shapes, uh, on the points on the picture above that have the same shape on them are in phase. Circle is in phase with circle. Triangle is in phase with triangle. Square is in phase with square. They are not in phase with any other point. Triangle is not in phase with square. What a lot of people will think, too, is that triangle is in phase with circle, and that is not correct. So let's talk about why. Rule number one, they have to be the same displacement away from equilibrium. Square and square are same displacement away. These are both at crests. That is fine. Circle and circle are same displacement away. They're at the midpoint, the middle level, equilibrium level. So are triangle and triangle. So people get tempted to say that these two points are in phase. But there's another rule. They have to be moving in the same direction. And you're like, well, it's a picture. How are they moving? Well, let's imagine the wave is going in this direction. Okay? The wave is traveling in this direction. It doesn't have to be, but let's just pick that direction. This point right here, this little part of the wave, the next thing to hit this part, to get to this section of the wave, will be this trough, right? So isn't this point going to be moving down? Look at what's happening to the triangle. The next thing that's going to happen to the triangle is this crest is going to be over here. So the triangle is about to be moving up. They are moving in opposite directions. They are not in phase. On the other hand, if, I mean, this is only one and a half wavelengths right here, if there's more of this wave over here that just isn't drawn, the next thing that's going to hit the circle part over here will be another trough, right? So we've got a trough coming to this point. We've got a trough coming to this point. They're at the same uh, height right now. These two points are in phase. Next thing that's going to hit both triangles is a crest. Okay. Next thing that's going to happen, both squares are at the crest right now. They're going to go down to the midpoint and then down into a trough. 
they are also in phase. So it's a two point, it's, there's two criteria. They have to be the same displacement away from equilibrium, and they have to be moving in the same direction. Triangle is about, if the wave is moving to the right, triangle is about to move up, circle is about to move down. They are not in phase, even though they're at the same height. Okay, that's a tricky one. Um, if something is in, if two, we have two objects that are in phase, by the way, we say that they are either zero degrees or 60 degrees apart. 360, did I say 60? I'm, excuse me, 360. Points that are in phase are said to be either zero degrees or 360 degrees apart. We measure phase in degrees. If points are out of phase, obviously, they are going to be 180 degrees apart, okay? Exactly opposite. Out of phase means exactly opposite, okay? Um, the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is the wavelength. If two points on a wave are in phase, okay, then the physical distance, oh, so if they're in phase and they're like consecutive points, like there's no other points that are in phase between them, then the physical distance, literally the length between those two points is the wavelength. And usually, yes, this will be measured in meters. This is a physical distance. You could also think of wavelength as one complete cycle of a wave. One complete cycle of a wave. Okay? Now, let me give you what a wavelength... Um, well, actually, I'll scroll up and I'll show you. So, a wavelength is this. Okay? Now, leave a little bit of space because this could also represent something else, but we'll get to that in the next video. Again, notice the uh, wavelength is between. I had these circled right here. These are two points that are in phase. There's no other points in phase between these two, with these two points. So we say that this is one wavelength. You could also think of it as one complete cycle. You start at the middle, you go up, you go back down, you return back to the middle. Please do not tell me that this is one wavelength, okay? You haven't even gone down yet. You've just gone up and down, back to here. That's not a full wave. Full wave is the complete cycle, the complete oscillation. We could have also said that this is a wavelength. You could have said that this is a wavelength. Those are all distances that show one complete cycle of the wave. It goes between two points that are in phase. Now, for a longitudinal wave, it looks a little different, again, because we have to draw longitudinal waves kind of funky. And I hate drawing longitudinal waves. It drives me insane. In case you think I get some sort of sick joy out of this. For longitudinal waves, Okay, for longitudinal waves, this would be your wavelength, distance between successive uh, areas of compression or condensation. So this would be the wavelength. I'm going to go very briefly to our reference tables, actually, because so I want to show you what the symbol for wavelength is. It is a Greek letter. You probably have not ever seen it before, or maybe you haven't seen it before. Uh, the wave section is on page 5. Can I zoom in? I can. Okay. Page 5 is the wave section. And the symbol for wavelength, it's right under my 180 and 360 here, is right here. Okay? It's this funny looking thing. It's kind of like an upside down Y, someone said. It really doesn't have any sort of um, equivalent in our, in our language. Um, it is known as a lambda. L-A-M-B-D-A. Lambda. And the best way that I have ever seen to draw a lambda... Um, is the way I always draw them is I will draw a 7. I'll just put like a, another little leg on the 7 here. Okay, That is a lambda. It's a Greek letter. Okay? So that's all we need for wavelength. We will be back in a few minutes to talk about period, frequency, and speed. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying Memorial Day.